Hello once again ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to more of the year 2000 Euclid paper that's the grade 12 level contest put up by the University of Waterloo. It does require for the most part full solutions. We just did question 5 in the previous video and now we're up to question 6. Specifically we're at question 6a which says let uh, the symbol we call the floor function uh, but let the floor function of x represent the greatest integer, which is less than or equal to x. For example, the floor of 3 is 3, because 3 is the greatest integer, which is less than or equal to 3. Uh, the floor of 2.6, well, the greatest integer less than or equal to 2.6. 2.6 is an integer, but it is more than 2 and less than 3, so the answer is going to be 2. If x is positive and x times the floor function of x is 17, what is the value of x? Okay. Okay. So, how would we go about doing this? Okay, um... So the floor function satisfies a very nice property. And that is that no matter what our value is, the floor function of x is less than or equal to x, which is less than, strictly less than, the floor function of x plus 1. x is definitely less than this integer and greater than or equal to this integer, and that's what makes this integer the floor function of x. Okay, so um, how might we use that? 17 is x times the floor function of x. So 17... Uh, so what we can do is we can say, well, x is definitely greater than or equal to the floor function of x. So we can replace it. We get less than or equal to 17 less than floor of x plus 1 floor of x. So I have an x in here. So x times the square root of the floor function of x. So all I've done is I've really multiplied this uh, inequality up here by the floor function of x, and then I was able to recognize that the middle part is 17. So uh, 17 lies between some integer squared, and this expands to some integer squared plus that same integer. Okay. So x has so 17 has to be greater than or equal to a square and less than uh, that square plus its square root, plus the, the number in here. Uh, so let's look at some possible values. So root x has got to be less than or sorry, the floor of x has got to be less than root 17. So we could have x, the floor of x is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Uh, the square root of 17 is 4 point something or other. Let's just see what it is on our calculator. Four point one two three. Okay. So since the square of the floor of x is less than or equal to seventeen, and uh, floor of x is definitely an integer, it's going to have to be strictly less than square root of seventeen. So it's going to be zero, one, two, three, or four. So uh, x itself will start at zero point something, or one point something, or two point something. From a 
17, 17, 17. And here we're going to have floor of x squared plus floor of x. So we'll have 0, 1, 4, uh, 9, 16. And over here we'll have, uh, we just had so 3 plus 9, that's 12, and 6, and 2, and 0. So we can see the only situation that works is this last case right here. So x looks like 4 point something. Okay. <clears throat> but we know that 17 is x floor x. So 17 is just 4 times x. Therefore, 17 uh, divided by 4 is going to be the value of x. Now, uh, we're asked for what is the value of x. This should be our final answer. We should take time to double check. Does 17 divided by 4 actually begin with 4 point something or other? Because otherwise, the floor of x isn't going to be 4, and we've made a mistake somewhere. Okay, maybe there is no possible value of x. That, that's entirely possible. So we just grab our calculator really quickly. 17 divided by 4, 4.25. So when I take the floor function, the greatest integer less than or equal to 4.25, I am going to get a value of 4. So this equation does really work. 4 uh, times 4.25 is, in fact, going to be 17. So it all works out. Okay. And we did use x as positive in here. Okay? All right. So, b part, we need a written solution here. The parabola y equals negative x squared plus 4 has vertex p and intersects the x axis at a and b. Okay, and it lies directly above the origin. The parabola is translated from its original position so that the vertex moves along the line y equals x plus 4 to the point p. So our vertex moves up to uh, point q. Since this is a downward facing parabola, the vertex will be the highest point. And fortunately, they did give a, the parabola in vertex form, so it'll be very easy to extract the value of p and hopefully maybe the value of q. In this position, the parabola intersects the x-axis again at b, but also now at point c determine the coordinates of C. Okay, well C lies along the x-axis, so immediately we know it's going to be something comma zero, and that's definitely helpful. We'll get ourselves another piece of paper. So it'll look something like this, C0, okay? So we're going to immediately throw that out there. Really, we just need to figure out this value C right here. All right, let's draw ourselves a copy of the picture and see what we've got going on. There point P here, and it's going to be transposed, or it's going to travel up along... Uh, y equals x plus 4 to point Q. We have C. We have B. And we have A. Okay, and here's our point P. So y equals negative x squared plus 4 is in vertex form. So we can see its vertex, P, has coordinates. Uh, we haven't subtracted by x in here, so it's going to be a 0, and that makes sense because it does lie directly above the origin. We saw that it uh, lies on the y-axis in the picture that we were given originally. 
and 4, because if I plug in x is 0, we're going to get 0 plus 4, we're going to get 0, 4. Okay. So q lies in the line y equals x plus 4. So what we could do is we could give q some dummy variable uh, points here. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's let Q have X coordinate Q. And then we can solve for the Y coordinate because both P and Q lie on the line Y equals X plus 4. So we have coordinates Q is at little Q, little Q plus 4. Okay, we're just labeling what we can. Are we going to use these coordinates? I don't know. Are we going to solve for a Q? I, I don't know. I don't know where we're going with this yet. But we're getting some points out there. We need C, so we need to start talking about coordinates. So it might be helpful if we knew what A and B were, especially B, because it's the intersection point of both parabolas. Okay. So A and B both have, since they intersect the uh, y, uh, the x-axis, they both have y-coordinate 0. Now since they're on the parabola, they must satisfy 0 equals negative x plus 4, or negative x squared plus 4, so x squared equals 4, so x is equal 2 or negative 2. And then we can easily tell what the coordinates of A and B are. A will be at negative 2, 0. B will be at 2, 0. Because in our picture, 2 is on the, or sorry, um, B is on the right-hand side. So it's going to have the positive value of x, which is 2. Okay. So. The translated parabola has vertex form. Now, the scaling factor, the factor of A, is just going to stay as negative 1. Okay? We're going to get negative something, but we can write this parabola in vertex form in terms of the point Q that we just defined. So x minus Q squared, plus q plus 4. Okay, so now we have translated it, and it's still the same parabola. It's got the exact same scaling factor. That constant a in the vertex form is still negative 1. And so we haven't stretched the parabola at all. We've just sort of moved it. We dragged it by its vertex to the new vertex q, which is at q and q plus 4. So we have the new vertex form of the parabola. So b lies on this parabola. So we know that 0, we plug in the coordinates of b, it's going to be negative 2, 2 minus q squared plus q plus 4. Okay, and we can expand this side out, and I suspect we're going to get a quadratic in terms of Q. And then uh, hopefully we'll be able to then figure out what the other uh, root of this parabola is, the other x-intercept. Alright, so we have a negative of 2 squared minus 2, 2Q two plus Q squared plus q plus 4, so that's negative q squared plus 4q, uh, negative 4, so minus 4, plus q plus 4, and that's going to give us negative q squared plus 5q 
and then the negative 4 and the positive 4 are going to cancel each other out. Okay. So we can quickly factor this and say, uh, we can rearrange it and say 5q minus q squared, which easily factors into q and 5 minus q. So q equals 0 will give us this parabola having uh, one of the x-intercepts at b. Or q equals 5 will also give us the same uh, intercept. And this makes sense to us. We were given two parabolas that both have the intersection point at b and both have this same vertex form. Now the first one we gave, uh, the first one we were given, corresponds to the value q equals 0. And that's why that first parabola, the one we started with that had vertex point P, had B as one of its x-intercepts. So we know right off the bat Q equals 0. Yes, that's a parabola, but it's not the new parabola we're looking at. It's the old untranslated one. And that means that the value of little q uh, that gives us our new parabola is 5. And that means that capital Q, that point, will have uh, coordinates 5, 5 plus 4, so 5, 9. Okay? So this corresponds to the new parabola. And therefore, Q is at 5, 9. And that means the vertex form of the translated parabola is Y equals negative X minus 5 squared plus 9. So now we can find the coordinates of C. It's going to be another one of the x-intercepts, so 0 equals negative x minus 5 squared plus 9. And that's going to be negative x squared plus 10x plus 25 plus 9, minus 25. That's going to be negative x squared plus 10x minus 16. Okay, we'll continue on the next page. So now we have a quadratic formula, or sorry, quadratic equation. We need to apply the quadratic formula. We have x squared minus 10x plus 16. You can bring it all over to the other side and make uh, the a value positive. Okay. So we have to ask ourselves, do we want to use the quadratic formula or do we want to uh, just try and factor it? Are there two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative 10? Okay. And if I stop and think about it, I'm looking for things like integers. Okay. And I can see fairly quickly, I mean, this is me talking, so I can see fairly quickly. It might take you a little while, which is why I'm rambling a bit to see maybe if you can work it out for yourself. But uh, the value of negative 2, negative 8, those will multiply together 16 and add to negative 10. And in fact, we already know that x equals 2 will definitely work. Why? Because b at 2, 0, we know is one of these x-intercepts. Okay? So knowing that our factorization should give us x minus 2 definitely means we're on the right track. In fact, if we had wanted to, we had a third option. We could have uh, done polynomial division, if you're aware of that, divided this quadratic by x minus 2 and factor it. Or you can use the quadratic formula. Either way will work. So 2, 0, 8, 0 are the intercepts. Intercepts. B is at 2, 0, therefore C must be eight, eight, at 8, 0. Okay? 
And I think that's all we were asked for is what are the coordinates of C? Determine the coordinates of C. Well, we got them. Okay, we figured out the coordinates of A and B. We created uh, some coordinates for Q in terms of uh, a variable. And we used the location of B to help us solve for that Q. That gave us the equation for this parabola. And at that point, it was a simple matter of finding the x-intercepts. So that does it for question six. I think it was a very nice little question. Um, but uh, leave a comment and let me know how you did and what you feel about the question. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys for the next question, which will be question number seven on the 2000 uh, Euclid paper. So I'll see you guys then.